2009 through 2016 Mercedes E350 oil filter housing replacement. I'm Brian Esser from How To Automotive. I'm gonna walk you step by step through the process of changing out the oil filter housing. Before we get started, I wanted to show you the part numbers for this job. We're gonna need the oil filter housing. I'm gonna be using a factory replacement part. We're also gonna need a thermostat. So I will link up both of these parts in the description of the video. So one of the first things we need to do is get the vehicle off the ground. We need to get the lower splash yields uh, removed. So if you're doing this at home, use floor jacks and jack stands or, and lift it up. And then we're going to take the uh, splash shield by following the perimeter and removing the fasteners on the two front uh, covers like this and remove those. So now we need to start draining the coolant. So right here on the driver's side is the uh, pet cock for the radiator. Go ahead and loosen that up. Have a bucket ready below to catch the coolant. While that's draining, I like to take the uh, covers here and clean them up because they have all the oil and, and debris on it from the, from the oil filter housing leaking. So go ahead and clean these up while your coolant's draining. After that, we're going to come back to the shop, lower the vehicle back down, and remove the top engine cover by lifting straight up and setting aside. Once we've got the top engine cover up, we need to remove the serpentine belt. You're going to need a 17 millimeter socket and a, and a ratchet like this. And right here is the tensioner. It's so on the driver's side here. So we're gonna to torque this over to the left and that's gonna spring the belt loose. So our next step is to get the upper radiator hose off. To do that, the first thing I like to do is take this little vent line right here and like to remove it. To do that, you're gonna follow it over to the coolant reservoir and pull this little metal clip out and then you can pull the line out. Uh, I leave it in on the neck, just pull it out from the reservoir like this. After we get that removed, then we're gonna remove the clip here, the horseshoe clip on the upper hose. Once you get that clip pulled downwards, then you can pull this hose off. You have to wiggle it a little bit side to side like this and pull it out. And I just used a flat blade screwdriver to pick those horseshoe clips out of the hoses. Now I got it tucked off to the side. Now I'm gonna use my VIM tools um, oil filter adapters here or, or sockets here and take out the oil filter from the housing. You can either use a half inch extension or use a socket over the uh, adapter here like this and loosen it up. So go ahead and uh, take the oil filter out and set this aside. If we were to leave this in when we take the housing off, it'll dump a bunch of oil everywhere. So I go ahead and take it out and then I use my little uh, suc suction tool here and I, I suck out as much of the oil out of the oil filter housing as I can. Now with an E10 female torque socket, we're gonna remove the idler pulley here. So we're gonna remove the center bolt. Now that we've got the idler pulley off, the next step is to get the electrical connector off the uh, temp sensor here. So you're going to pull the little lock tab down. I use a little flat blade screwdriver to give it a little twist. Once that unlocks, then you can reach around like this and squeeze the tab. And once you squeeze the tab inwards, then you can pull the connector straight down. Once you got the wire disconnected, now we're going to pull it out of the housing here and just flip it over off to the side. So you're going to route it out like this and then get it out of your way. So now we need to get to the top bolt of the thermostat and sometimes you can flex the air pump here out of your way and use the uh, use your extension and get in here and take the bolt out and sometimes if your tools are too fat you can remove the two torque bolts there and then remove loosen the torque bolt down here below it and now the air pump is loose a little bit and we can rotate it counterclockwise just a little bit with a little screwdriver right here so you can pull it off to the side or torque it over to the side now you can get your extension with your e-torque e uh, socket on here it is also a E10 and go ahead and remove that top bolt and then once you get the top bolt removed you can remove the bottom bolt it's easy to get to and then you can take a uh, pry bar and just pry it like this and go ahead and pull the thermostat out like this. Some of the coolant is going to run out so you want to have a bucket underneath. Now we need to remove the dry belt tensioner is blocking a bolt also for the housing right here in the back so to get the tensioner off we're going to need a, a dowel pin like this or we're gonna need a uh, like a, a punch or something, and we're gonna to torque this over counterclockwise, and there's a spot where we can put this pin in, and it'll hold the tensioner in the upright position. That way we can get access to all the bolts. So what I'm gonna do is put the, uh, the uh, ratchet back on here with the 17 millimeter socket, torque it over to the left, and once I got it torqued over, then I'm gonna put the pin in, and as you can see here, I put the pin in right here. So I have it torqued over, and it holds it into position and that allows us to get access to all the bolts. So when I get it off, I'll show you a closer look. So go ahead and uh, torque it over and put your pin in and go ahead and remove the two um, E10 fasteners or possibly it would be E12 fasteners. So once you have the bolts removed, you can go ahead and pull the uh, tensioner off. Now that I got it off, I can show you a closer look at how the, uh, the 
the spring-loaded tensioner works and how the dowel pin holds it in place. So you, it slides into a little hole right here and it has this little ear that hooks onto it and just keeps it from rotating back. Now with all that removed, we have complete access to all the bolts on the oil filter housings. So there's going to be six of them in total. They're E12 torque bolts here. So we're going to go ahead and remove those. I'm just going to start at the bottom and, uh, and remove them all one at a time. So I, I like to remove them and leave them in the housing. Uh, all these bolts are different lengths. So uh, you want to keep track of which one is which when you take them all out. So you're gonna go ahead and remove all these fasteners. And then I put them in my tray here and kind of in the order. So this is the top left over here. This is the uh, the one in, below it and so, so forth and so forth. So I keep track of how these bolts are all laid out. Now that you got all six of the bolts removed, you can go ahead and just give it a little wiggle and pull it off. And now you can set this aside. And now you can see that all the coolant and oil is running down here. So I got a bucket below catching everything. After it finished draining, then I wiped everything down and cleaned everything up. I stuffed uh, paper towels in the holes where the oil ports were when I was cleaning this up. I used razor blades, scrapers, and I also use uh, parts cleaner to clean everything up and some brake clean. And I cleaned everything up and made sure all the gasket material is all removed. Now I'm going to take our brand new housing here. It already comes with all the gaskets and everything attached to it. And go ahead and set it in place and start all six of the fasteners. Run them down until they're snug. And now I'm going to torque them all down to 25 Newton meters or what translates to about 18 and a half foot pounds. And I'm doing this in a crisscross pattern until all six of the fasteners are torqued down. Just remember all the bolts go into special holes so keep track of that when you put them together. Now we can go ahead and install our new thermostat. Make sure the gasket is in place. Go ahead and slide it into place and start the bolts. Once you got the uh, two bolts started and run in until they're snug, you can go ahead and torque those down to 18 foot-pounds. Remember, you have to flex this out of your way. And if you took the uh, fasteners out of it, you can go ahead and reinstall those and tighten those down. Now we're going to take the, uh, the wire here and tuck it back down between the housing and then go ahead and plug it in. And once you, once you plug it in, you want to make sure you push the little lock tab up. I like to give it a little tug to make sure it's not going to pop back off. So I took a couple of these torque bolts out of the uh, air, air injection bracket here. So I'm going to go ahead and reinstall those and then tighten up the one on the bottom. And then once I got that done, now I'm going to take the, uh, the tensioner pulley here and go ahead and put it back into position and go ahead and start the two bolts and tighten those down. And I'm also going to torque these down to 18 foot pounds. Now we're going to put the idler pulley on. I'm going to put a little bit of blue thread locker on the uh, threads of the bolt. This will prevent it from vibrating loose and came, coming back off. That's what it was on on the factory, so I'm going to reduplicate that. And go ahead and start this bolt. Run it until it's snug. You want to uh, torque it down to, um, to 18 foot-pounds. And you're also going to want to make sure you spin it to make sure it's not binding. Now we can go ahead and put the serpentine belt back on and reroute around all the pulleys. Once you get the belt routed around all the pulleys, then you can torque the uh, tensioner over slightly to the left and pull out the uh, dowel pin here. And once you pull that dowel pin out, you can release the tension. Here is a diagram. This diagram came from uh, Gates Belt Company. It, they have an app called the Navigates app. And with the app, you just scan the VIN number and it will show you all the diagrams of any car that you're working on. It's a pretty cool little app. I made a video on how it works. I'll link it up in the description of the video. That way you guys can check that app out. So now we can install the upper hose. You don't need to pull the clip out or down. You just leave it in the, in the lock position and push the hose in until you hear the little lock tabs clip. And if, uh, if you did pull it down, you just go ahead and push it up and lock it into place. Give it a little tug to make sure it's not gonna pop back off. Now you can take the vent line here and plug it back into the reservoir and put the, uh, the clip back in. On the old oil filter housing, there's a rubber grommet we need to pop out and transfer it over to the new housing here. So I recommend that you do an oil change on the vehicle and go ahead and take off the slash shield here and drain the oil out, put the drain plug back in, put the shields back up, and also uh, tighten up the radiator uh, petcock where we were draining it. Go ahead and tighten all that back up. Now you can go ahead and fill up the car with eight and a half uh, quarts of oil or eight liters and then fill it up with Mercedes approved coolant. When you're filling it up, you want to fill it up to that little plastic bar right here inside here. You don't want to go up to past that, just right up to the top of that. This is an expansion tank. If you overfill this, you could pop it. So you're going to fill it up to that bar. Then after that, we're going to go inside the vehicle. We're going to start it up and we're going to put the heater on, on the hottest position, but the fan on the low position here. And uh, what we're going to do is going to let this car run for about 10 or 15 minutes. 
and uh, we're gonna let the uh, thermostat open up. So you're gonna let it run and you're gonna double check for leaks while it's running. You're gonna double check for leaks and you're gonna feel the upper hose here, give it a squeeze and it, it, uh, once it gets warm, you know the thermostat has opened up and you're gonna check your coolant level. It may drop a little bit, so you wanna uh, fill it back up to that line on there. And also you're gonna wait and, and see for the cooling fans to cycle on and run. If it's cold outside, it may take 20, 30 minutes to get it to run. You may also have to raise up the RPMs one of the things I forgot to mention is the oil filter housing comes with a brand new filter in it already. But it, I would recommend double checking it just in case. Uh, go ahead and take that cap back off and, and double check to make sure there is a filter in there. So once your thermostat has uh, come on, the cooling fans have run, you want to double check your coolant level. After that, you can go ahead and install the top cover. I will link up all the parts and tools that I use in this video in the description. That way, if you need to pick up any of those, you can find those there. I'm Brian Esso from How To Automotive. I'd like to thank you guys for watching my videos. Encourage you to subscribe. Invite you to head over to the howtoautomotive.com website for more valuable videos like this. Thank you again for watching.